Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and this is my Diaton Roma F4 long range. You know, the small 4-inch long range quad that is uh, below 250 grams, so it opens at least a few possibilities for you to fly. And ever since I got it, I thought, yeah, this is actually a pretty nice way to fly because this thing handles the air for its size and for its weight really amazingly well however however this thing over here the gps at least the gps that was over there originally was always suboptimal what i mean by that that it either was even unable to get the 3d fix in like half an hour or it was just taking so bloody long to get the 3d fix and then it struggled to keep the fix and get the exact position in the air and by the way i'm not the only one who's really like noticing that this is a problem of almost all of those small four inch long range builds Almost everyone who ever got one of this style of the of the of the drones figured out okay maybe there is something really bloody wrong. Even yesterday, Joshua Bardwell asked on the INAF uh, Facebook group, "Do we have any special ways of making this uh, this thing works?" Then. Yesterday, yesterday I spent almost like the whole evening trying to find and pinpoint one single reason why this the gps on those things in general are not working by looking at the internet checking what other people did and then making some conclusions and my conclusion is slightly different than the conclusion on everybody else i think in the internet there are at least a few videos that show you what you can do to improve the uh, performance of the roma gps or any other gps and let me get uh, quick list of the recommended things that you can do so i'm struggling to get this uh, 3d printed part off so the ideas are idea number one is to move the gps serial port somewhere closer to the gps to nicely twist the wires between the gps and the flight controller to put it inside of the shielding like for example the original gps module over here uh, was shielded in the i think aluminium mesh or something but then i figure out that okay but the aluminium mesh is not really grounded so then i added the ground to really make sure that the shielding is grounded and it's really shielding something then there were also idea okay maybe your gps module is uh, wrong so I replaced the original module in here with the Batian BN180 and then lower the baud rate change the protocol etc 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 bottom line every single things of those things I changed um, maybe there was some kind of effect maybe not really hard to tell bottom line every time I plugged in the VTX and the GPS antenna the lost was basically almost not there that the lost though the fix was almost immediately lost and the gps was not able really to get the proper gps fix why because the vtx was just polluting everything probably uh, the electric part and the uh, radio frequency and also look at the distance between the vtx antenna and the gps itself there was just too much of the electric noise for the gps to be able to get the fix and i was thinking i was figuring out how to solve it and until the moment i realized that no all of those ideas are actually basically wrong because instead of really changing something they rely on maybe improving secondary or even three third important part in this problem and the most important parts of this problem is that this is a very small frame this is a very tight space and no matter how you're gonna put everything over here together you will end up with a, a lot of electric and radio noise everywhere including the fact that the gps antenna that you are using on this thing like the original antenna i have over here is probably the cheapest gps you can get uh bn 180 cost i think like around 
10 bucks, so you really have to do admin that it's pretty cheap. And we cannot really expect too much. So instead of doing those like magical solutions, like, okay, put some copper below the uh, GPS, I decided maybe, maybe I just need a better GPS antenna. Maybe I just need a better GPS module. And maybe this really make a real time difference. And guess what? It did. So what I did? I got rid of the original ante GPS antenna, I got rid of the Batian BN180 and instead of that I just installed a good, and by good I really do mean good with good uh, filters on the antenna and the nice selectivity and the nice sensitivity and the beefier GPS and everything beefier, the Matek M8Q5883L. Uh, I know that to this uh, setup, in this setup, I cannot really connect the magnetometer because the flight controller over here does not work with the magnetometer because there is no eye to see and the beta flying GPS rescue is not really using that. But this is what I had, so I connected this. And because ultimately I will want to migrate to this whole quad to INAV, having the magnetometer actually makes sense. So I was able to fit the Matek M8Q5883 instead of the original antenna. I only had to make small cuts on this TPU printed bracket over here. Connected everything with twisted wires, of course, to the, uh, to the ports closer and try to move it, okay, not too close to the, to the flyer, to the VTX. And guess what? It helped. It helped. Right now, I'm able even here inside of the house to get the VT uh, GPS fix in like uh, five minutes. It's long comparing to a bigger quads that I own, but this is internally under the roof, so which is already taking quite a lot of the signal from the from the outer space that gets into the antenna. I not checked this yet on the flying field because of the weather, but uh, I put this thing on the balcony and it was able to get the fix with just connected battery connected everything vtx working uh in also a few minutes which when this thing was really struggling to get a vtx uh, gps fix at all this one really got a fix and was working and at least before flight everything seemed to be working just fine so my conclusion is mm, those small changes are not really the way to go. The real problem is that the antenna is just too close to the VTX and this thing puts so much RF noise that it's just blocking the reception. And to solve this problem, you need a better antenna with better selectiveness and probably some hardware filters. Uh, I'm not an expert on the GPS filters, but I know that there are at least few filters. And unfortunately, the cheapest GPS modules does just do not get those filters because this of course would rise the price so by replacing 10 bucks vtx uh, gps why well, am yeah, today always mixing vtx with the gps with the cheapest gps module with something that well let's uh, let's be honest it's like three times more expensive i was able to fix my roma f4 long range cheap solution to the problem Probably not really the cheap solution, however, it's a solution. So my suggestion to everybody who's making those small quads, please install better GPS antennas. This really seems to be solving the problem. The magical solution like the not grounded shielding, it's not working. Even the grounded shielding, it's not working. I even experimented with powering the VTX from the separate uh, battery elimination circuit. Not helped as well. Just install better GPS, like the Matek I used over here. And with that short piece of the consumer advice, uh, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.